Welcome to day 67, where we're going to add images to Tekinta. Now, Tekinta is a little bit fiddly. You've probably encountered that. It is a very strange way of building user interfaces, and that's not Tekinta's fault. Most programming languages have a programmatic way like this of building user interfaces, and it does feel a little bit like trial and error as we're building them, and that's true. Most of the big programming languages that have a standard deployment environment, like iOS or Windows-based C-sharp files, will have a drag-and-drop editor to build those interfaces. Unfortunately, Tekinta doesn't have those, but it's good to learn this stuff anyway because it gives you full control over everything you need. Just a reminder that if UI designing Tekinta is not your cup of tea, jump ahead to day 70 and you'll be back on the good stuff. Okay, let's define an image first of all. So our image is going to be a tk.photo image. And the file is going to be a file that we need to upload. So let's get our file window up here. So I'm going to drag and drop my picture into the files pane from my desktop, which I've called the fields.png. And that's the file name that I'm going to place in this argument. Okay, so one of the issues here is we haven't got a place to put the image on. The way we do that is by building a canvas. Now this needs to go up a little bit further after we've created the window, certainly, but before we've created all the elements to go onto it. And we're going to create a canvas. I'm just going to call it canvas. We need to tell it this canvas is going in the window. And I'm going to make it the best part of the size of that window. Since my window is 300 by 200, I'm going to make it 300 wide. And I'm going to make it 150 tall. So it's the majority of the size of that window. I'm then going to pack the canvas. Now, before we do that, let's put the other elements above it first. So I'll have those things there. And just check that we haven't broken anything. And then I'm going to add that image to the canvas. So canvas.create underscore image, which is a weird thing to do because it's a different type of command with the underscore in there. But there we go. That's the kinter for you. Now, we need to tell it what the image is. So my image is called image. So we need to tell it the starting position. So in this case, zero and zero and what the image is. And there it is, but it is huge. So how do we go about sorting that out? The subsample command is what we need to make it smaller. In this case, it's making it smaller by a factor of two. But let's see if we can make it smaller by a factor of three and four. And it occurs to me I've put it at zero, zero, but I think one, one might be more accurate here. And as the image anchors in the center, I'm going to put it at 150 pixels across because I said it's a 300 pixel wide window. And I'm just going to anchor it one pixel down because it doesn't need to move very far. I've made it five times smaller here just to fit it on there. And you can see I've added an image quite easily there. So to update an image is quite simple. First of all, we have to define the images all in the main body. So not just the first image, but the second image as well, which includes subsampling it if you want to make it smaller. As normal, we set the image in the container size on line 20, but we call our command from our button, change image. And all we're doing here is talking to the canvas. We're saying, look, canvas, we're going to use item config on you, which changes the configuration of the canvas itself. And I'm saying change the container to point the image to our new image. So if I run this code, it loads the first image and then loads the second image. Of course, we might need to play with proportions and sizes to make sure it shows everything we need it too. If you want to import images that are not PNGs, you may be in for a more difficult time. That works in a slightly different way. And for that, we're going to need to access our package manager for the first time. From your sidebar, pick your package manager and we're going to search for pillow hyphen hill. I'm going to click the plus button on this. Now you'll see it working here in the background, but what it's going to do, it's going to in install a library called pill or Python image library, which allows us to access different kinds of images. And we're going to use this from PIL import image and then image TK. Now you'll know this works if when you click run, you don't get an error message because it knows that package is there. And that's because those two are required to open different kinds of images. All we need to do then is replace file with image.open and then in the brackets, we're going to add in the URL of the image. In this case, it would be the fields.png and it should work in the same way. 
common problems then? Well, the most common problem when we're doing images is this. I'll run the code and the first image loads fine. And when I click, click me, it blanks. Now, the way in which it handles, I can't find that image is just to show nothing a lot of the time. And the issue we've got here is in the change image subroutine. I'm defining my new image in there and then setting it. And you think that would be fine. But the problem is, is that because this is object orientation, and because this is a little bit weird in that the button creates variables, when the button is pressed, it creates a local variable called new image. And then it says to the main container, Oi, update this. The problem is the moment it leaves the subroutine, these two variables disappear. So those things need to be defined in the main body of the program, ideally before the container. And with those in there, things work much as you'd expect them to. The other major problem, of course, is getting the image to fit in the box. You're going to have to play around with the subsampling size to resize it, and you're going to have to play around with both the window size and the canvas size to make sure that the image fits properly into the box it's supposed to be in. I've broken some code, which is a nightmare with the Kinter, isn't it? Let's be honest. Go and try it. Have a play around with it. See if you can fix it. Your challenge today is really simple. What I'd like you to do is create a program that allows you to type the name of a person into the box, press find person, and if it can find an image for them, it loads it up on screen. You have four people in that folder, Charlotte, Gerald, Kate, and Mo. You should be able to search for any of those. If I type in the name of a person that doesn't exist, it should just pop up a message in a label that says, this person does not exist. When you're done, share it with us in the community by publishing it and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to share it with us on social media. Tomorrow, we're going to look at hiding and removing elements on the screen.